Hey, what's up? AP Stats Guy here. Just want to talk to you guys about this N versus N minus 1. Uh, this is a big deal when you're trying to calculate the standard deviation. I know because I had trouble with it and it's kind of weird. You're like, why is there two uh, equations for this thing? Well, actually, it's they're, they're, they're both trying to do the same thing and it has to do with where you start. So here's the deal, all right? So when you have the population, right, and you wanna calculate the standard deviation, you can calculate the standard deviation using the formula for the, for the population, that makes sense, and you actually get the standard deviation for the population. But if you only have a sample and you're trying to guess the population standard deviation by using the sample, and that's why we take samples. We always take samples because we're curious about the population. Um, so when we take samples because we're curious about the population, we're making an inference. So when I take a sample and I want to use that to calculate the population standard deviation, um, if I use the same formula, I end up getting a number that's too small. And we're going to talk about that for a second. So remember, they both want to find the population standard deviation. One does it perfectly, and the other one does a pretty cool job when you add the fudge factor in, and I'm going to explain that. So first, let's talk about formulas in general, right? When I want to calculate the mean of something, right, um, how do I do it? I use the formula, add everything up and divide by n, right? So I add them all up and divide by n. So I'm going to try that and see if that works for, uh, for a sample standard deviation, for, I mean, for, for a sample mean. I know the population mean you add them all up, but let's see if I, for the sample mean, what happens if I add everything up and divide by the number of numbers? Do I get a good guess at the population mean? Because that's why I'm taking a sample. So I took a bunch of samples. Let's see what happens. Ready? So I took all these samples of size 10, and I calculated the mean for them all. And I take those, the, all those sample means, and I wonder, are they close to the population mean? So let's take a look at our population. Suppose I'm doing this thing called the Oyster Cracker Challenge. I want to know how many oyster crackers are like little saltines you can eat in a minute. And I go to a town of 10,000, and I have everybody do it, and I time them. And I count how many they stuffed in their mouth that they could get in their mouth within a minute. And I found out the average was 25, and the standard deviation was 5. So the average was 25, the standard deviation was 5, population was 10,000. Now, I want to take a sample, someone else wants to take a sample, you want to take a sample to see if that's changed or whatever, yada, yada, but you're not going to ask all 10,000 people. So we went out, we took a sample of size 10. So let's see if those samples, the mean of all those samples is near the true mean of 25. So let's see, we'll make a little histogram of all the sample means. Well, here's 25, let's see. Suppose this, I start putting them down, one sample, another sample, another sample. Using that formula, what happens when I use that formula, I get a nice pile. Some of my samples, I had some people who ate a lot of them, could fit a lot of them in their mouth. And other samples, I had less. But most of them were around 25, and what ends up happening, which is a really nice thing, which we want to happen, is we want about half above and half below. We want the x-bars to be near the truth, and they are. So what happens is using this formula, boom, we get what's called an unbiased estimator. We get a good estimate of the population, even when we have a larger sample. When we take a larger sample, we have more. Oh, okay, here's my sample with 50 people, a sample of 50 people. Let's see if those x-bars are around 25, meaning let's see if those sample means are near the truth. Well, what happens when you have larger samples, the means end up even getting closer to the truth. So you end up getting a pile of x-bars that is even more narrow. So this, this pile of x-bars ends up being right around the truth again. It's centered at the truth, and again, some of them are low, some of them are a little bit high, but they're all pretty close to the truth. We get another unbiased estimator. So what happens is I end up looking at this formula saying, that's a pretty good formula to use for my sample mean. So I'm going to use this formula, the sum of all the individuals divided by n, when I have a sample, and it's going to work out just fine. So I like it. Now let's see if I can take the population standard deviation formula and use that for my, uh, my sample standard deviation. So suppose I'm using the same formula for sample standard deviation. I take each individual minus the average of the sample, square and divide by n. Let's see if I get the same thing. I want to see if it's a good estimate of the population. So I take this sample, I, I get an s from this sample, an s from this sample, an s from this sample, and I get all these s's all these sample standard deviations, and I put them in a pile. And let's see if they're centered around the true standard deviation, 5. Well, here I end up getting, whoa, what's happening here? I end up getting a bunch of S's that end up being 
less than five. They're quite a bit less. There's a big gap between the middle of my pile, the middle of my pile of standard deviations, which is right around here. So I have to, I want to slide this up so it's an unbiased estimator. So when I use that formula exactly, I end up getting something that's a little bit less. Why? Think about it. If you're taking a sample and measuring the spread of a sample, first the spread of the population, uh, but think of the first spread you learned, the, the range, which was the high minus the low. Well, if I want to see if this spread, high minus, high minus low, high minus low, sorry, I want to see if that spread, I want to estimate that range by using a sample. Well, obviously, with a small sample, you're not going to get as much of a spread because you have less points. You're less likely to get those extreme values. Well, that kind of impacts the standard deviation too. You, you generally have less variability in a sample than you do in the population. Okay, so you don't get those extreme values out there. So you'll always underestimate it, generally. I mean, you'll always underestimate the range. You'll usually underestimate the standard deviation using that formula. But maybe if I take a larger sample, it'll help. Because it seemed to like even get more accurate there. So let's do it. So I take a sample of size 50. And I get a standard deviation for that one. And I get a standard deviation for this sample of size 50. And the next sample of size 50. And the next sample of size 50. I get all these standard deviations. Let's see if those guys will be piled around five. So here they are. They seem to be closer together, but once again, they're closer to five. They're closer to five, but they're not quite there. So what ends up happening is even larger samples, while they do get closer, the middle of the pile of standard deviations, I still have a biased estimator. It's just not as biased, I guess. So, I need to fudge this formula. I need to mess with this formula so that with small samples, it'll move it up a lot. It'll make it a lot bigger. And with large samples, it'll slide it up a little bit because with large samples, I'm only a little bit below where I want to be. And with small samples, I'm a lot below. What magic thing can I do? Hmm. Maybe that N minus one thing is going to make a little sense here. So let's look at some fractions and see what happens when we reduce a denominator by one, what happens to the value of the fraction? Hmm. If I have some fractions like five over five, or another fraction like 10 over 10, or like 100 over 100, all of these fractions have the value of one. Let's see what happens when I decrease their denominator by a little bit by exactly one. This becomes five over four, 10 over nine, and 100 over 99. Let's see what decreasing that denominator by one does to the whole value of the fraction. So when I have a small denominator, like five, and I switch that to four, I end up getting five over four, which is 1.25. Look what that did. When I decreased the small number, it increased the value by 25%. It jumped it up quite a bit. Well, let's see what happens with the 10 in the denominator. 10 over 10 versus 10 over 9. 10 over 9 is 1.111. Increase of 11%. So it also increased it, but not as much. Well, let's look at a, like a, a denominator of like 100. When 100 goes to 99, this goes up to 1.01, .01, an increase of about 1%. Ooh. This looks like exactly what we need. And it is exactly what we need. So we wanted, remember what we wanted. With small samples, using this formula right here, we tended to be way below where we wanted to be. And with larger samples, we were a little bit below. With n equals 50. So maybe, instead of using that formula, and maybe instead of dividing by, for this size 5, we divide by 4, It'll increase this by 25%. Well, I mean, it'll increase this a bit. And maybe instead of 50, we divide by 49. It'll increase this just enough to get it up there. And I think it'll work. And what happens is it does. So what happens is we don't want to use that formula because it's a biased estimator. But when we use the following formula, when we add up all the distances to the mean, square it, and divide by a number a little bit smaller, we get an estimate that's a little bit bigger, 
and our pile of these guys ends up falling directly around the true standard deviation. It slides them up enough so now they're an unbiased estimator, which is what we wanted in the first place. So, I don't know if that made a ton of sense, but, but just hear me out. Both formulas are trying to do the same thing. They both want the population standard deviation. So it really has to do with what information do you have. If you have the population, use the formula for the population standard deviation. It's perfect, and it'll give you the exact one all the time. But if you don't, you have a sample, well now you're just making a guess. So use the one for sample standard deviation. And you'll get a guess, but just like, it's just like the mean. Like If I take a sample, I know the mean of the sample is not going to be exactly the mean of the population. It's going to be a little bit off. Well, if I have the mean of the, of, if I take the standard deviation of the sample, it's not going to be the exact standard, devi standard deviation of the population. It's going to be a little bit off, but that's okay. But I don't want it to always be too small. So I divide by this little fudge factor, and it makes up for the fact that small samples tend to have less spread than the population. So we take, make up for that underestimating thing that happens with that. There's a couple other reasons mathematically that it happens, but I hope that's enough to ease your mind. They're both trying to get the population standard deviation. One of them gets it perfectly. The other one does a pretty good job of guessing it. Sometimes it's a little high, sometimes a little low, but on average, if you took tons of samples, the average of your sample stand, pile of standard, sample standard deviations, the middle of that pile of sample standard deviations will be over the true standard deviation. That makes it an unbiased estimator. I hope that answers your question. If you have any more questions, please ask questions below. I like, I like comments, I like feedback, and subscribe, and I'll try to get some more videos out soon. If you have any other ideas, let me know. I want to help you learn stats. Stats.